poor guy it seems like he's seen better days hello everybody yeah, welcome back definitely. to novel house we are back with some more ichio roulette Woo it's actually been a while since we've done one pretty sure the last episode we recorded was a good two three months ago oh yeah for sure but we are now back and we found this game called Stillwater. it's pretty short Whoa. um it's about this private investigator and trigger warning it does have jump scares so just be it warned does, yep. before we so, start hide in the comments if you need to yes i'm not a fan of jump scares either but i mean each show roulette horror edition is kind of what this is gonna contain so that is true yeah i guess we'll just... i'm gonna pee everywhere whoa oh god oh does yeah. this have music i'm not sure i guess we're about to find out yeah i guess so unseen text Self-voicing enabled. What does that mean? Screen shake? Self-voicing disabled. Uh, yeah, oh, definitely no, not keeping that, that on. <laughs> well, good thing it's disabled. Okay. Um. Text. Oh, there's the music. There it is. All right. Uh, I don't really know what else to mess with. So. Hold on. Let me check something. Blip volume. There we go. That was it. Turning up the steel water. Turning up the game audio. That's a pretty good idea. All right. Uh, ski. All right. Break room. Oh. Whoa. What the hell? Oh, oh so this must. This is the music. It's jukebox. Oh, cool. I guess we'll just start. Hmm. This is a work of fiction. The resemblance to any real life people is purely coincidental. This game is just contains depictions of horror, mature themes, violence, and my cock. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Your cock? Oh. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, yeah. Uh, Alright, caretaker. Alright, Joey, do it. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. Too bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm going crazy. Nina. Calm down. If we can just talk it out. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> shut the fuck up. So many strange things keep happening one after another. Every day, there's this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but I check. I read that as cheek in my I brain. I cheek every and I just, fucking. Like, I cheek every fucking. You know what's funny? Whenever I was really little, like five or six, I was so worried to say the word faucet because I thought I was pronounced fuck it and I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Did, what? Did yeah. you really? That's so funny. I check every fuck it. <laughs> every ceiling. Every pipeline, it's still. Still, I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. <laughs> that's tough. Okay, that sounds like a you problem, but whatever. Ooh, but the water. Water. The water. I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. Uh, yeah, something's coming. <laughs> I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk. And they walk. Upstairs, then downstairs. And upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs. And, blah, 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 blah. and it goes on and on and on and on like that. But somehow it does come to an end. It ends all in front of your grandfather's room. That sounds tough. Okay, like who gives a fuck? Anyway, I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. Oh. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... Oh, um... Uh... The phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Something terrible is lurking through this house. What is that? What the fuck? I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get... Yeah, I almost read that as soon as you get your back... <laughs> Take your grandfather and just leave this place. Look out. How could you say that? 
I, ju I can't just leave. That's my home. Please, Nina. This place is not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like this. We're gonna have to. Okay, then die, then. It's my home. Wait. Oh, my bad. It's my home. It's my home. Why did you say that twice? Oh, uh, dinner. Diner. Fuck. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> Seven o'clock? Kind of late. Din, din. <laughs> All right. Middle foggy morning. There sits a man by the corner of a booth. Dinner, he says. He drinks black coffee, and depending on his mood, occasionally... Moon? Oh occasionally God. orders a donut. Black coffee. Is it Godot? And today, it was just black coffee. Oh, my coffee. gosh. Godot. Damn, Hugo looks like oh he's Oh my god, he's shit. scrunkly. <laughs> oh, I swear, I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. A freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. My foot. I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got like you Look at his eyelashes. Bamboozled. Not expecting that. No. Uh, Hugo Lawrence, wow. age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. Damn! Because then he Damn, continues dude. to grumble to himself at last night's grueling work at the office. I really need to Man's find is a about to job. shit himself later. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the thought too. How it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. This Proof just in. Meaning. Hugo afraid of fog. What a fucking <laughs> joke. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even remember my, for my fate, I guess. Fuck! Hugo finally <laughs> stares at the compiled newspaper clip he's put together. Some of them are from recent events, but mainly were all past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange personal. things come with a price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. So the wrong mama join it! No! The only familiar voice interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Who the fuck? <laughs> Whoa, who oh, are right. you? Uh, Hello. Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him and kicks him in the balls. And then gathers some files <laughs> and shoves back in the binder. <laughs> Meanwhile, the tall man takes us an initiative and sits at the obvious end of the booth after being kicked in the balls and wants to talk to him anyway. He greets the waitress by asking by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special <laughs> with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige. He goes back to the cus or cu customer, yep, the counter to relay his order. Uh, the man looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and now jumbled newspaper clippings, all while Hugo is trying to ignore him. Hugo looks so <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. Uh, you should really eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today? I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, my balls, Noah. pretty boy. <laughs> I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little? No, not even a little. <laughs> There's a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. You're stuck with me. Two! As if the Dan Ooh. looks fire. As if the world grace <laughs> no and the even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. God damn, that's like seven pancakes. <laughs> Why the hell did you order for two of us? Just see what you want to eat. Don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious, right, Hugo? <laughs> Are you even listening to me? Come on, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will. And I'm not allowed to let you faint again. You already look like you're gonna die. So open wide! <laughs> you are disgusting. Here comes the train. Noah de Leon, age 27, a natural born charmer, just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. Oh. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. I'm dying. That's good. <laughs> right? Good food will always help you cheer you up. Damn it, I got swept away again. He swept me off my feet. Oh, oh so by pretty. the way, the chief will be out for a business. No, wait, that's the wrong person. <laughs> oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned he'll be for a couple of days. Why'd well, she start talking like me? <laughs> what did she tell you this? I don't remember. I didn't hear anything about it. Uh, yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about business trip. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she didn't tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. To this fucking backwaters ass place that nobody <laughs> likes to go. <laughs> Pretty sure we're the other customers that ever come here. You know what? I'm not surprised. No, wait, that's the wrong person again. You know what? I'm not surprised <laughs> anymore. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? Technically, I have the day off. I'm going to head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. <laughs> not going to ask permission. Why? He would just rest for the day. And pass out the opportunity to get to know you better? <laughs> nah. Oh. Quit it. Mm -hmm. 
After their enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, aggressively make out, and head to Hugo's car. <laughs> They totally bone in the back seat of the car. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. A bloodhound? Hi. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening, lazily Hi. stares at Noah. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, big guy. And then closes the door on the dog. We'll try not to make too much noise and stir what's Colby. Borf. It's not his name. His heavy lidded eyes so oh slowly peeked to see who calls out for him, and then he exploded. It is his <laughs> one and only partner, his human. As it finally realizes who he is or where he is, the old bloodhound stirs up from his sleep, pounces at Hugo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. What would have happened if I would have turned on the voice thing? It probably would have been like the uh, AI, it's like yeah. the narrator. As it finally realized who he is or where, like you probably sound like that. Probably. Bar Borf. Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap. I actually look happy for once in my life. What the hell? Ew! I don't like him looking <laughs> like that. Colby, eight years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. Has the biggest tendency to sleep all over the place. And shit everywhere. Noah, oh who is witnessing all of this from the backseat, chuckles to himself. He's amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. He wished that it was for him. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how many times I try. When it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can be Co Kobe? Col Colby? Kobe. <laughs> Kobe. Agency, 7.50 a.m. Three headed back to the office. A space just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organized mess. Messed? Fuck. Messed. To his credit, for the <laughs> amount of boxes he was painstakingly went through. Please, he did a fair job. Albeit, it could have been better. Right and co wow. boxes. You really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks less crowded. Oh, shut up, will ya? I said I was gonna go get it. Get to it, fuck. Thanks, boy. For Hugo continuing to give his deserved head pads, he noticed a someone. A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the storefront. A woman? A woman. A the woman appears frantic. <laughs> the Disheveled woman? and wearing ill fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. Hugo promptly ignored her. When she finally makes eye contact <laughs> with Hugo, she immediately rushes in and he slams the door in her face. Oh, God. Aw, she's pretty. I, I'm so sorry. Sorry, but I'm gay. Get out. Oh, okay. I wasn't hitting on you, but whatever. Um, anyway, I know that sign is closed up, but wait, what the fuck? I know that this closed sign is up, but I can't read. So let me in. <laughs> and then she murders him. But I saw you, you all right, miss? I think you're kind of fucked. I need your help. Great, didn't ask. <laughs> My grandfather, he... Died? Before she could <laughs> Noah swiftly intervenes. <laughs> Let me work my charm. Hey, it's okay, mama. we'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Pretty lady. In my lap. Noah gestures one of his empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing in relief and then fell through the floor. She then walks <laughs> towards the center corner of the room and sits on the sofa. I never said you could fucking sit there. Can you start <laughs> off by telling us your name? No. That's not a name. <laughs> I'm sorry for earlier. Yeah, you should be. My name is Nina Mortimer. Wow, replace the M with a T and you got Tornimer, which is the name of the mayor from Animal Crossing City Folk. Oh, yeah. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Yeah, that's great. Have you played Animal Crossing? It's good. <laughs> no! Watch over your grandfather. Also, New Horizons is overrated. New Leaf is where it's at. Why do you look like you barely have a neck? Because I don't. <laughs> it was stolen from yes. me. Oh, God. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Can you get the fuck out? Is I he just in danger? Here. Great answer. You're mean. I'm afraid he is. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Miss Mortimer, <clears throat> if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? I don't fucking know how to do this. No! No! <clears throat> Okay, damn. I've tried requesting their help, but they all gave me the same answer. What, fuck off? Yes. There's nothing they can do about it. I just don't think they tried. If only I knew who Lewis was. Well, you came to the wrong place, so I don't know who Lewis is here. <laughs> He's Lewis. like, I ain't Lewis, so get the fuck out. <laughs> Nina fidgets at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter and a gun. I'm going to kill you. My grandfather... He received a cryptic messi me message. message the other day. Message. It didn't come with an address or a name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. Is that a smash letter? As she hands over the letter, <laughs> Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. I was accepting a smash. smash. <laughs> Whoever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Stop shaking. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. He unfucks it. 
At first glance, oh it seems like any normal written message. A person named Lewis is asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight. And then that's when turnabout goodbyes happen. He needed to share yeah. something important with him. And then he said, Merry Christmas, and then shot him. <laughs> For those of you who don't get that reference, it's an Ace Attorney reference. You can actually see that Ace Attorney reference if you watch our Ace Attorney Let's Play. Wow! However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I'm coming for you, Henry. Oh, no. Were there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them. Give it to me. Oh, okay. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one... This one was different. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Like, literally ever. I've never <laughs> heard that name before. It's so weird. Not a relative or family friend. Henry, hmm. Does he happen to go by the name of Hero? No. Oh. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. I actually, I still had no idea that Hero's actual name was Henry. At least, like, I, I know, think that's it's in so the game weird. files. I don't think they actually state it in the game. Yeah. It's bizarre. Hashtag not my Henry. Anyways. <laughs> if I don't do something about this, I'll lose. Oh man. I'll lose him, too. You'll lose the game of Eat Your Roulette? Damn. I'm going to lose the game. Hey, for those of you who are watching this, you lost the game. I'm a fucking asshole. Uh, I know. Just by uttering the words alone. What the fuck? I don't, if you want to unsubscribe for that, I don't blame you. <laughs> Hiding away her tear-streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an if you comfort, unsubscribe, you lose the game. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The only way you'll stay in the game is if you keep, keep yourself sobbing. Mm-hmm. Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissues for her. Although, honestly, it's probably going to only be a small fraction of you who even sees this video anyway. Hugo, this is true. Hand, you lose the game on. if you unsubscribe. You just kind of are there if you um, stay subscribed. You win the game if you turn on YouTube notifications for Melhouse. Yes. House. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever, whatever this Lewis person is, is a real dickhead. They're coming. Oh, baby. Yeah, uh, do you want more tissues? Or, like, can I help you? I'll do it. <laughs> I'll take on your case. For a moment, the silence fills the room. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> Only starts her to Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. Get away from me. I'm gonna kill you. You'll take it? Hugo simply nods, and then his head fell off. Use your fucking words. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. He nods more aggressively. And he gets brain damage. I'm gonna kill you. You don't know how much this means to me. Yeah, you're right, I don't. We're glad to help, Miss Fuckhead. I don't... <laughs> His face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just... <laughs> I'm just gonna take a guess. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Nina. <laughs> Nina. Nina is fine. Okay. Whenever I see the name Nina, it makes me think of Nina from Code Geass. And Jay, you're not going to get this. But for those of you who mm -hmm. have watched Code Geass, you understand why I hate Nina so much. Oh, no. Well, Nina will do our best, I guess. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag and pulls out a bomb. It takes out a note. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's gets more and more, more like aggressive. <laughs> this is my address. Come over sometime. Wink. Oh. Wait, no. I can't I'll do that. Be <laughs> I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. Yeah, he's taken, jackass. Okay, literally, I wasn't coming on your man, so calm down. She politely bows once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, she drives the car the into the office. Her desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later. Again. I fucking hate my life. Car. <laughs> car. From the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. So from what I remember, there's two endings to this game. And judging by how long they are, we should probably be able to fit it in one episode. Oh, nice. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rearview mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. Finally, he looks out the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. I feel like I'm in a music video. <laughs> hey, you're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? Nothing, I'm just blasting my immortal by evanescence. <laughs> in my brain. Uh, this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? You like what you see? No, you <laughs> idiot. You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna nonchalantly take my hands off the wheel. See where we go. <laughs> just say it. Alright. Alright, I love you. I love you. Kiss me. <laughs> I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. She reminded me of the bitch from Kokios and that I hated her. 
But it's her last name that caught me off guard. What? Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. <laughs> Till I walked in. What oh do you mean? Gosh. They've been struck with so many tragedies that over time people began to believe they were cursed or something. Didn't ask. Every other year, I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents, but I don't think they're accidents at all. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they'd perceive her as paranoid or hysterical or just a bitch. Or worse, <laughs> crazy. Like my love. Oh I can't gosh. imagine all this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find here. I like how I just headcanoning as Noah being thirsty as fuck. I know, right? <laughs> Is that why you decide to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. Can you stop calling him an on to me for two minutes? <laughs> Think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. <sighs> Besides, two are better than one. <laughs> exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. Okay, well, Aww. I'm human, so that means I'm better. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? <laughs> Bet you haven't. <sighs> <laughs> Mortimer Estate. Wow. Passing through the countless dirt roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. Nestled and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugh, Hugh, Hugo, and Noah go on the gates of the sheer scale of the manor as they parked adjacent to Nina's car. Hugo. Wow, and I think she came all this way just to request us. It took us more than a couple hours to get here. Maybe she didn't really have a choice. What do you mean? What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. I'm having a heart attack. Grasping oh, no. tightly in his coat, he begins to gasp for air. Begins to gasp. Yep, he begins to gasp for air. <laughs> his gaze, he hazes. Heases? I'm gonna die. <laughs> As he leans close the to the car. Fuck? He heases. Like oh, a fish drawn out of the oh. sea, he desperately heaves. <sighs> but this ache that he harbors pales in comparison to pain far more excruciating. Is that the house? No, something far more sinister. He feels it. Someone is watching him. Yeah, it's me. A piercing oh gaze fixed on him, like leering at a bug and wanting to strike. He looks like a bug. <laughs> I'll never forgive you. What the hell? He's pissed. Damn it, already? I need to hurry or else. Hey, are you alright? No one calls out to him, snapping <laughs> him out of his fixated trance. It's like, what's your fucking deal? <laughs> what's your fucking damage, dude? Colby nudges his head against Hugo, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did you hear this just now? Uh, hear what? That voice. It was so close to my ear, I... Is everything alright? When did you get here? I'm a ghost. Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit wind wind winded. Winded out? Winded out from the shrimp? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm winded <laughs> out. I'd be happy to make you coffee at the very least. Ah, uh, yes. I want rain in my coffee, please. If it's no trouble. <laughs> Let's make it outside. No. Uh, no. No, not at all. Well, you look pretty happy. I'm ecstatic. It's the least I can do. Yeah, it is. Once again, a subtle uneasiness from Nino's services. <laughs> Before Hugo gets a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Wow. Are you sure you're alright? <laughs> <laughs> sounded like you were wow. choking earlier. I mean, you could... Never mind. Oh, oh, I sent a fight. Besides, we're already here. If we get back out now. I don't know what the fuck you're going to say to me, Noah, but we're going to have a word when we get back. Listen to me. I think you should love me. Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. Hey, what's your fucking problem? <laughs> <laughs> she stands there silently as if contemplating something. Guys, hey. I, I shit myself. I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. I throwed up. I well, throwed you were up. pretty <laughs> You were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really Oh wait, yeah. I'm really sorry about that. Don't steal yeah. my fucking lines. You should be sorry. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. Laurent. Huh. His assistant, Colby. Ew. And I'm his second assistant, Noah DeLeon. Rar. Mm. No. Uh <laughs> 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 
Huh, it seems so surreal, just like a cartoon. So what, are these like French names, I think? Or like... Oh, are like they? Like De Leon? Like, I feel like that'd be French. And like Laurent, Laurent? I feel like that's... Oh, they might be, honestly. No, no, that's like... I don't really know too much about... I mean, I took French in high school for two years, but I don't really know all about French names, so... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's I'm not that die. funny. Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. Yeah, shut up. Mm. I didn't even say anything. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Laurent. <gasps> I'm French. <laughs> Just I'm like sorry before. you had to find out this way. <laughs> As carefully choosing her next words. At least not British. She decides that in this situation, <laughs> words are not enough. <laughs> You'll see for yourselves what I mean. Uh, we probably apologized for this before. Uh, we're, we apologize to the like one British fan that we actually have. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hate British people. No, we don't. We don't. And with that, Nina enters the house. Little did she know it was Monster House, leaving the three to follow behind. That movie rocked. It was scary. Hugo was about it to was. enter through the foyer, the foyer, when he feels a tug the on foyer. his arm. The foyer. Hey, Hugo, look at me. Don't forget what I told <laughs> you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. Actually, no, I'll fucking tell Colby. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. No, I thought he was staying behind, because he said, let me know. <laughs> Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, he sees some fuckhead sitting in the red chair. Hugo notices hey, the dude. interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral scents and antique paintings, it exudes an elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than the splendor. This house is much more terrifying inside than out. Looks pretty standard to me. Yeah, it looks like a normal house, but whatever. Please come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo cannot discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, upon, upon, upon closer, <laughs> I'm adding words, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. What? Ew. Tell them to go away. Damn. Why? The is, is, is he grandpa immortal? is fucking young as shit. He's probably immortal. Sitting on an armchair is a young man. He's dressed in a white collar down dress shirt, tucked in with black slacks and black penny loafers. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there daged. Daged? Fuck! With little acknowledgement <laughs> of the people around him. Still motionless, like a doll. Grandpa, these are the people I spoke of. Oh, I don't care. Okay, fair enough. This is Detective Laurent and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Okay. Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not felt, felt, but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them. And yet here he remains, forever unchanging. Forever young. Ah! They've come a long way, so I'll be making some coffee. Goodbye, forever. <laughs> Would you also like some, Grandpa? No. <laughs> yeah, I guess, pal. The young man is still not... What? The young man still does not reply back. He left me on red, never glancing at Damn. Nina or anyone else in the room. Ghosted in real life. Rain. Damn. Alright, you know what? Fuck you, you crusty old hag. <laughs> I'll be sure to make a cup for you too, jackass. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer, and then she punches the Grandpa on the head. Very more questions, but you follow Nina outside. In the rain, I guess. Before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There's an all too familiar air about the Henry Mortimer. The Henry Okay. His eyes. They're similar <laughs> to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. He's broken. Nina, that no, man. No, he's not. I can fix him. <laughs> yes, he's my grandfather. The one I asked you to watch over. I... No, this is hard to believe, but... He had to draw something out of her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slicked back hair and wearing a luxurious suit. He appears to be poised and refined. He's dripping. Complete contrast to the current Henry <laughs> Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he is the same person. Uh, why does he look so young? I love that face. Bye. <laughs> it happened a few nights ago. Where did, what did you do with Hugo? <laughs> Um. Wait. What? Was the blue-haired kid's name Hugo, or was that the blonde dude? Oh, no, no, blue hair is Noah. Hugo's the detective. Yeah, Noah. My bad. Anyway, 
I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him up, but when he did, when I did, he looked so different. You look, you look like you have very big eyebrows because of the shadow. <laughs> so many things were rushing to my head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. I don't know why. Hugo looks like he's so done. He's like, is this bitch still talking to me? <laughs> he wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. And his face. I recognized his face. He just looked younger. Wow. <laughs> wow. Tell me <laughs> all these stories that never happened for 500. <laughs> <laughs> that was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him, already opened. Who? Asked. Oh, so you're telling me I already <laughs> you already opened it? Oh, yeah, I get this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> the pools of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this? I'm dropping this case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dropping you. Get in the car. Maybe my family really is cursed. They're not. Curses aren't real. <laughs> well, thanks for the <laughs> cure! Detective? Oh my god. I think we could easily get too involved in that sort of thing exists. In reality, the ones that fixate on it feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies, all those things are what they want to become real. Deeper into emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a... Okay. But like a curse, those <laughs> curses drag other people down with them. I thought I heard a noise. Uh oh. <laughs> Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. I assure you, we'll see this through. Or maybe we Personally, won't. I hate that fucking face that you're making. Not that one, but the previous one. <laughs> <laughs> For you and your grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Now, our first priority what? is to find out more about Lewis. <laughs> Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you have it with you? Do I look like... Ah, uh, yes. It's here. Give it to me, dumb bitch. Thanks. No. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. No, you won't, you fucking liar. Of course. So I take it out of here. To smash. I'll go upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the ground floor. Don't die. Got it. Before they leave to their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in close enough for me to my. Mm -hmm. Basically, what I want to say is, um... <clears throat> You're really fucking annoying. <laughs> Why would you say that? I'm gonna cry. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Okay. <laughs> I'm counting on you. Toodaloo. You too, boy. Borf. Yes. <laughs> and with that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting the investigation. Number 30. Yeah, ooh. Ooh. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. All right, fuckers. Hugo walks towards the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From customized drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes that extravagance. Much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is moldering despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here too long. Okay, I guess I'm done. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> what the fuck? He searches and searches, still, but no sign of anything. Wow, you really searched one... Oh, two spots. Wow, <laughs> you're so good at this. Not one thing pertaining to Lewis. I fucking hate my job. Whoa. Damn it. Nothing? It's as if he cleared out everything. Just blank everywhere. Oh, well. You win some, you lose some. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from his envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no foreboding thread at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. What the? If you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dreary, after all. How about if I can ask one favor of you? Could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Ever yours, Lewis. Is this the same Lewis? I thought he was the cause of all this. I don't understand. 
Ah. Without warning, the sound mm. of a click can be heard across the bedroom. As if something unlocked itself, Hugo turns around and sees the, at the foot of the bed a chest. Unlike other furniture, its dark and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to round on its own, preparing itself, he opens the chest. Sides scramble together are a bunch of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he's, when he's, oh my fuck, when he stumbles across <laughs> an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. Oh, it's about to be me. <laughs> An unidentified young man was found on the morning of XXXXX, three days prior to his death, according to the police. Ruled as a suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. It certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed. No claim of his body has been made yet. Lewis. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried underneath the clutter. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeless luster. Inside it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses smiling brightly. This would be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture. Did he put this here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Okay, oh, so I, a choice. I guess so this will probably lead to each ending. Uh, we'll take it first. Why not? I should probably hold on to this for now. Probably gonna die. You're making a grave mistake. <laughs> Hugo's about to put everything back in the chest, but he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. What the fuck? Already? I'm cutting off my leg. Whoa. Oh. Water. A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no. Suddenly, the lights shut off. A scream Damn. is heard, followed by the sound, by a myriad of shouts. Hugo's about to call out to Noah, but he stops at the sight of pale feet before him. Looming over him stands this tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. It appears a young man, but Hugo knows far that knows that it's far from it. No, this very thing is trying to imitate a human form, trying to be human. It's a skinwalker. Hugo oh God! Stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he's forced to watch as the watch the horror as it slowly creeps towards him. Just like before, a sensation of someone staring at him within, but this time it's drawing nearer, inching ever so closely. The worst to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then oh it stops. Boy. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Hey, what the Don't get in my way. Okay. <laughs> All of a sudden, the door of the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. Attention from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gasps desperately for air. His vision blurred and breathing jagged, he staggered nearest the toward the door. He hangs up his handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Oh. Colby! To his dismay, he's only greeted with the silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly sees the hears the sounds of Colby's relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from doing so. Fuck this! <laughs> Fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, sooner he grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made out of? Still trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you, just break already! Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing he can grab hold of. However, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches starts to tear away from the wall. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hands slip out of reach. Shit! Oh god. Oh, my balls! Clamoring wildly, as he loses his grip on the ivy, he crashes down into a thicket of bushes. Air forced out of him, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious, and immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. How old are Although you, Hugo? <laughs> screams, I think he's 30. Screams out in pain, oh. he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he wakes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where the tragedy starts and ends. What about state? Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? Here's the faintly sounds of 
barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, he doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Just let him die. Yeah. Hurry, right, bye. Let me go! My grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. He'll get hurt, too. I don't care! I... Okay, bye. Fuck! Don't want to lose anyone anymore. So at that instant, Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing Nina's stead. Hugo! No, don't! Uh, please falls deaf to his ears. Not even the whines and worried cries of his partner can make him turn back. Well, we're gonna drown. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and disheveled, as if all the life had been drained from him, surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please, come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them, I guess. Tanina, you're all she has left. <laughs> she needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. A slight jolt from Henry's arm, as it stirred from the mention of Nina. Uh. He slowly turns to face Hugo. <laughs> Nina. However, just as cruel as violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold on him. Oh, this is my fault. If only... If I got to Lewis sooner, none of this would have happened. Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lewis, I'm sorry. I should have. Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I. Everybody wrote to you those years ago. Why would you do that? You understood you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lewis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lewis's locket. Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lewis. All of it. Together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Henry had here for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. What fool believes him deserve forgiveness? Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe he could be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around Henry's instead. What the uh -oh. fuck? And its arms unnaturally contort around him while his head perches on his shoulder. This thing, this Lewis, is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing cold green eyes, it stares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved. We can be forgiven. No, you can't. <laughs> There's only one <laughs> true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of endings. Before Hugo can reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and, cries and the desperate pleas, Hugo dives <laughs> after him into the abyss. He pulled in Omori. Into the abyss. Plunging into the icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body, like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to his hips with his fingers, fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs. I mean, whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure, slowly descending into the darkness. Damn. Damn, I'm huge. As he finally gets closer to Henry, the long snake-like arms stretch across the boy and grab Hugo's neck, violently squeezing on the air out of him. Ah! He desperately tries to wrench his hands away. <laughs> with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Lewis, where are you, Lewis? Wait, no, that's Henry, I think. He's looking for Lewis? Digging deep into his coat's pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and that long forgotten. Holding it out as she shines ever so brightly in the dark. Ah, there you are. He releases his grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks it with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to. As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and energy spent, that's all he can do. Before he loses his consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards them, getting closer and closer. And then everything fades to black. Drifting along with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through wave after wave, not knowing where he's going or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. 
How long has it been since he's had a good night rest? Uh, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here, dumbass. Ugh. Whoa, Noah. I'm sorry for startling you. I just want to see you before I go. Who's that? Lewis. I don't know. Uh oh. You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. Thanks for almost drowning me. <laughs> if that was you. With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant hugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Whining as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shot right open, he jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Can I have that? Anyway, are you alright? Oh my god. Noah you starts to pat his back. While Colby continues to wind up for Hugo. What happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness? I swear you don't listen to a damn word I say. Nah. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. And then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches him. Oh. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> Detective Laurent? Oh, Nina. <sighs> <laughs> oh, it's you. You're someone I want you to meet. Uh, behind oh, her stands man. an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side, pensively his opponent to himself. So I'm assuming this is probably Henry. It looks like he got his yeah, aging so. back. Although his youth is long faded, the eyes were what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer a piercing and vicious green. Only eyes just like Nina's. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lewis would have done in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I tracked everyone down. Yeah, you sure did. And I kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her. The one to blame for all of this. But you, someone that I've never met, still went out of your way to save me. Not knowing the burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. Go fuck yourself. No, I'm just kidding. It's my pleasure, sir. Before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hands one last time. I hope that someday you too will overcome it. Overcome what? The next day. Oh, you know. Well, good morning, Hugo. You're running early. Morning. <laughs> With much fervor and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, it looks like he's going to combust any minute. You look like you're going to blast. Are you writing up a report? <sighs> Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Can you shut the fuck up? Yeah, for the most part. Still need to write yours, too. I will. Later. No, Just haven't had breakfast yet. Not unlike you by myself. Well, the same Where the thing. Fuck did you, where did you pull this out? <laughs> where did you fucking get that? Let me guess. Two is better than one. Bingo. Just kidding. Actually, make a fuck yourself. Meaning this alone. <laughs> wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Oh, shut it, will ya? I swear, if I had fallen off the goddamn window, the report would have been shorter. <laughs> Before Noah can begin to cut the bacon, you cut the bacon. He pauses at the Why are you cutting it? Point. Oh, yeah. By the way, mind telling me what happened to Mortimer's window? Uh, I broke it. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's obvious to me. What I don't understand is, why the hell would you do that? Why is it broken? You know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I mean, I would have died if I didn't. Sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was freaking the earful from him. And also the bill. And, surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what, you just called it a day after all of that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it. Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Sadly, we already went through a lot for him. So this was nothing in comparison. And honestly, yeah, it should be free. After the shit I went through. Yeah, honestly. <sighs> you know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Yeah, you tell him, Hugo. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. But it's not breakfast anymore. <laughs> It'll be lunch. Heavily sighing, Noah sets outside the food on his desk and joins the other two at the couch. I can't lay down if you're also on the couch, dumbass. <laughs> Get off. Oh, I'm getting old. 
I mean, you are old. Shot it. Colby whined, ask for head scratches. Ah, uh, sorry, boy. Suddenly, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears and he leans closer to Noah. Hey, pretty boy. Oh. You know, I'm glad that you came along yesterday. <gasps> oh, what's this? Are you gonna eat chummy with me now? <laughs> Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. You had saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, you didn't say this. Didn't you say this was a nap time? So go the fuck to sleep. Get some rest. <laughs> you deserve it. You too. I guess we're sleeping together. I don't know how the fuck you're comfortable. Call me silence. Calls the room as three falls deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations. Just each other's comfort and sharing the small but rewarding nice rest. Wow. Good end. Hell and yeah. Bling. All right. It looks like we're gonna cut back to when um we get. The next ending. The bad ending. Uh, if I can... Oh. Oh, I didn't even realize Yeah, I guess that. we didn't really save. <sighs> Don't worry, I can just blow through most of the text anyway. Woo! <laughs> Alright. Leave the locket! No, not the menu. Leave it there. I think it's best to put it back for now. He knows what, but everything back into the chest, but he feels a wet and cold sensation. What the fuck, water? Water, I think it's damn it, no, God, no, fucking damn. Yeah, okay, so this is still the a piss save. monster. Damn it. Break already. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, where are you guys? Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing's going to be done. <laughs> Come back to shore. We can't afford to lose you. Yes, we can. Get in the water. This is waiting Hop for in me. the hole. It's waiting for me to come home. He disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Mr. Mortimer! Into the abyss. Mr. Mortimer. Mr. Mortimer. He sees a figure. Blah. 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 Yeah, all right. Give me Let's your see. neck, Hugo. Tired and motionless, he watches on as the abyss draws near, swallowing him, boring him, embracing him. <laughs> Let's share this happy ending together. Um, uh, we already got the happy oh, ending. Oh, okay, so the Whoa, bad that ending was is fast. Yeah, the wow. bad ending is Whee! really short. A mermaid tail. Wow. Honestly, we were probably better off doing the bad ending first. Damn. Damn, just like that. All right. The water is still. <laughs> that was so short. We literally spent like one minute wow. on the bad end. Wow. All right, so the, yeah, that was still water. Honestly, I liked the design of the characters. I thought the dynamic Yeah, the art style was cool. Yeah. So, pretty solid for a uh, short horror visual novel. Honestly, I was expecting yeah, a lot more jump neat. scares. It wasn't really, wasn't really much yeah, of a jump scare, too. to be honest. I was expecting like loud noise mm -hmm. and then... Right. I'm freaky, but it is what it is. Yeah. So anyway. what, are over, what are your overall thoughts? Um, I agree. The jump scares weren't really jump scary. I was expecting like more than that, but I really like the art style. The art style was interesting. Good character bonding moments. We had some gay people. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, I guess as always, if you... <laughs> 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 that's pretty terrible. But yeah, so if you guys want to, you know, give the series some support, you want to see us play some more random Ichio horror games, or just Ichio games in general, you know what to do. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in the next video. I'm not even going to try and, like, Well, you're terrible. You Whatever. Anymore. Bye. <laughs> Bye.